A new typhoon barreled across an agricultural region in the northeastern Philippines on Monday after thousands were evacuated to safety while still struggling to recover from the devastation caused by three successive storms in the last three weeks. Typhoon Taraji slammed into northeastern Aurora province and was forecast to blow over the mountainous Luzon region, where President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. just the day before inspected the damage from the last storm and led the distribution of food packs to residents in Cagayan and Ilocos provinces. Marcos skipped this week's Asia-Pacific Cooperation Forum in Peru to oversee recovery efforts from back-to-back -back storms. After making landfall in Aurora on Monday morning with sustained winds of up to 130 km per hour and gusts of up to 180 km per hour, the typhoon was expected to barrel northwestward across Luzon, weaken as it crosses a mountain range and then blow into the South China Sea. Interior Secretary John Vic Rimula on Sunday ordered the forcible evacuation of people in 2,500 villages expected to be lashed by Taraji, locally named Nika, warning that the rain-soaked Luzon mountains, valleys and plains were more susceptible to flash floods and landslides. The military said its disaster response forces have been deployed near high-risk areas and were standing by for new contingencies. It added that it suspended combat drills in the north due to the weather. Schools were shut down, inter-island ferry services and domestic flights were suspended in provinces in or near the path of the typhoon, the 14th weather disturbance to batter the Philippine archipelago this year. Forecasters said they were monitoring another brewing storm in the Pacific that could affect the country if it strengthens. The last two typhoons and a tropical storm caused more than 160 deaths, damaged thousands of houses and farmlands and affected more than 9 million people, including hundreds of thousands who fled to emergency shelters, after dumping from 1 to 2 months worth of rain in just 24 hours in some cities and towns. I'm going to go to the 
Russian Marines, together with the North Korean military, launched an offensive in the Kursk region, but they suffered losses, according to Forbes. Russian Marines, apparently backed by North Korean reinforcements, threw themselves at Ukrainian positions in Kursk Oblast in Western Russia. The agency writes, according to the article, Russia's 810th Marine Brigade, with North Korean reinforcements that arrived at the front last month, was not the only Russian unit to counterattack the Kursk salient, but it may have been the most unsuccessful. As Forbes explains, one of Trump's proposals is for Ukraine and Russia to agree to a ceasefire along the current front line, which includes not only southern and eastern Ukraine, but also Russia's Kursk region. If Trump's plan actually works, and it's a big if, Russia would effectively give up 270 square miles of Russian land in exchange for about 20% of Ukraine. That's 45,000 square miles it would occupy. Forbes writes, noting that Russian dictator Putin would clearly not be happy with this seemingly favorable exchange. As Forbes notes, the Russian 810th Marine Brigade, with North Korean soldiers attached to it, suffered a crushing failure in its attempt to attack the left flank of the Kursk salient. According to the Ukrainian Marine Aerial Reconnaissance Officer Kriegsforscher, cited by Forbes, the 810th Marine Brigade recently received a shipment of 40 BTR H2 wheeled armored personnel carriers to compensate for some of the losses it suffered during its attempts and failures to drive the Ukrainian army out of the Kursk region. Thus, at least 14 BTRs fired at the left flank of the Kursk salient. Ten of them are destroyed or damaged and abandoned, Kriegsforscher says. Analyzing the Russian losses during the offensive, the agency writes that up to 10 soldiers can squeeze into 17-ton vehicles, meaning that the 810th Naval Infantry Brigade could have lost 140 troops in total, although it's likely at least a few escaped their burning BTRs. In turn, Kriegsforscher did not rule out further Russian offensives in the Kursk region. As I said before, the left flank and the center will be the hardest places in Kursk Oblast. Kriegsforscher says, the Ukrainian military has been holding a foothold in the Kursk region for several months. In late summer, it was reported that the Ukrainian armed forces controlled 100 settlements and captured nearly 600 Russian soldiers. At the end of October, the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that since the beginning of the Kursk operation, Russia had lost 17,819 soldiers, both wounded and killed. Another 700 Russians were taken prisoner. Recently, the command of the Airborne Assault Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported that since the beginning of the operation in the Kursk region, Ukrainian paratroopers have inflicted losses on Russia of almost 8,000 soldiers. This is equal to 15 Russian battalions.